everyone, Miss Rabella here, and today we're going to talk about rational numbers. Now, before we get started talking about rational numbers, we want to make sure that our notebooks are set up and ready to go. So, what you can do right now is pause the video, make sure to put the title down nice and big, and if you'd like, you can pre-copy all of these notes before you watch the whole video. Otherwise, please make sure you pause the video as we go along so you have enough time to write and then you can resume the video when you're ready to focus in on the lesson again. All right, let's get started. So we'll start with the definition of rational numbers. Rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as a simple fraction. And that would look like hmm, A over B, okay? Now keep in mind, these simple fractions, the numerator A and the denominator B must be integers. Also, the denominator or B, it cannot equal to zero. So if you ever see a problem that looks like this, it is not a rational number. Zero makes this whole fraction undefined. All right, along with rational numbers, we always have opposites when it comes to math. So the opposite of a rational number is an irrational number, okay? An irrational number. This number is just crazy. So irrational numbers cannot be written as a simple fraction. Nope, they cannot. A in the numerator spot or B in the denominator spot are not integers, okay? And the decimals go on forever and they never repeat. How crazy is that? Just irrational, I tell you. So we have our rational numbers and we have our rational numbers and we have these definitions, but let's kind of look at this in more of a visual way. So let's swing back to our rational numbers. Um, here you see I have this kind of little picture drawn out. This is to really help us understand what rational numbers are. Now, our smallest area here are our natural numbers or our counting numbers. That would start with like one and you would count up and go on, so on, so on, so on forever. Okay, those are natural or counting numbers. And all of these natural numbers, all of these positive numbers, starting with one and moving on up, they are rational numbers. Now, whole numbers not only include all natural numbers, but they also include zero. And it goes on and on forever. All of the whole numbers are also considered a rational number. So if you ever see a whole number, you can rest assured it is indeed a rational number. Now, rational numbers even include more than that. Rational numbers are also all integers, or all integers can be thought of as rational numbers. Now, don't forget, integers include zero, all of our positive whole numbers, and all of the negative whole numbers. And it goes on and on in both directions. All integers are rational numbers. Rational numbers, though, also include number parts, such as three-fourths, there's our simple fraction, um, and it also includes decimals, like um, 0.75 or 75th, 75 hundredths, okay? Now, not just decimals that look like this, but we can also throw in decimals that go on and repeat forever, like 0 0.3333. And don't forget, we put this line above the three to remind ourselves that this number right here repeats. So all fractions are rational numbers when both the numerator and denominator are integers, and there is no zero in the integer or denominator spot. It includes decimals, which can be converted into simple fractions that have both integers in the numerator and denominator spot, integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers. Now, one other type of number that is included in rational numbers is some perfect square roots. So for instance, the square root of nine, if we go ahead and solve for that, it would be three. 
And three is not only a natural number, but it's a whole number and an integer. So we can classify that as a rational number. Now, this is a good visual of rational numbers. So let's hop over to irrational numbers. If you remember, irrational numbers cannot be written as a simple fraction. Either A or B are not integers, and the decimal goes on forever and never repeats. A perfect example of this would be pi. Okay, We often just kind of end pi at 3.14, but really, pi goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and never repeats. So it is an irrational number. Another irrational number would be the square root of 11. Now, unlike the square root of 9, there is no perfect square here. Um, when we would divide this out and kind of work out the problem, we would find that we would end up with a decimal that goes on and on and on and on forever and never repeats. So therefore, these types of square roots would be considered irrational numbers. Now, if I look here at my number line, you can see I have my zero, my positive integers, and my negative integers. I have some examples plotted out. I see one half in between the zero and one because one half is just a part of a number. And on its opposite side, I see negative 0.5, which is the equivalent to one half. It is its opposite, just in decimal form. That is halfway between zero and negative one. It is a number part, just like 2.75, we have a whole number and a part of a number, and the square root of 4, which works out to be 2. All of these numbers are rational numbers. So let's take a look at some examples. Okay, at the very bottom of my page, I have a couple different problems. I have 3 fourths, 0.2 or 2 tenths. I have the square root of 13, 0, 12, and negative 8. See if you can pause the video and identify which of these problems are rational numbers and which of these problems are irrational numbers. All right, let's see what you got. So our first example is 3 fourths. Well, I know that 3 fourths is a simple fraction. Both the numerator and the denominator are integers. And I do not see z zero in the denominator spot. So therefore, I can classify this number as rational. Now, I'm going to look at point 0.2. Point 0.2 is a decimal. It is a number part. I see that it does not repeat, or I'm sorry, I see that it does not go on forever, and it actually ends right here in the tenth spot, and if I wanted to, I could even convert this into a fraction. That point 0.2 is the same as two tenths. All of these would be considered rational right? Two tenths has an integer on both the numerator and denominator, and zero is not in the denominator spot, so it is rational. Now, I have the square root of 13. I know this is not a perfect square, okay? Because of that, right away, the decimal is not only going to go on forever, but it will never repeat. So this, indeed, my friends, is irrational. All right, zero. Now, zero, we can classify as not only a whole number, but an integer and also that rational number. Okay, so zero is indeed rational. It can also be represented as zero over zero. And again, integer zero is an integer, so therefore it meets the criteria. 12, 12 is a natural number. It is a whole number and it is an integer. So just with those facts right there, we can already say that 12 is a rational number, but if I really wanted to double check and put this into a simple fraction form, 12 would be the same as or equivalent to 144 over 12. That meets all the criteria, integers both top and bottom, no zero in the bottom, so 12 would be a rational number. Now, I'm going to look at negative 18. Negative 18 is not a natural number, and it is not a whole number. However, negative 18 is indeed an integer. And because it is an integer, it will go ahead and be a rational number. But I can also put negative 18 over 1 and get 18, or negative 18. And so 18 can be, has an integer on the top and an integer on the bottom. There's 1 instead of 0, so it is a rational number. All right, just as a quick review, 
Rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as a simple fraction like A over B. A and B have to be integers and B or the denominator cannot equal to zero. On the other hand, we have irrational numbers which cannot be written as a simple fraction. A or B or even both are not integers and the decimals go on forever and they never repeat, okay? Rational numbers are whole numbers, but they're also whole numbers and their parts are just parts of numbers. So that is the gist on rational numbers. Please make sure you have some notes in your notebook. Um, take a picture of your notes and then go ahead and add them into this assignment and turn this assignment in. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you for watching and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Bye friends.